Hi there and welcome back to another FPV guide video. Today we are back and again talking about the DJI XT camera system which is really a revolutionary system for search and rescue, industrial inspections and of course police activities and tactical applications. With us today we have John McBride from Rocky Mountain Unmanned Systems. I, I tried five different names so I hope I got this right. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we have got a couple of things. So what we did today was we went up in the desert and it was already quite hot when we got up there. So it will show some of the limitations of thermal camera systems, but it also shows that you can in fact find people. Sure. So uh, yeah, we definitely did a great um, uh, demonstration and, and we'll have some further video for everybody to review and look at and find some of the complications in using thermal imagery um, and, and temperature uh, sensitivity on a backdrop is very important. Well, so. I mean, the good the good news here, I was the victim, and the good news is I s tried to find shade, so I moved from the hot side into the shadow where mm -hmm. all of a sudden I became visible. Mm -hmm. But the fact of the matter is the ground in this on the hot side was probably body temperature. Yes, yeah. And it, we, we must hope that a lost victim goes for the shade. That sure. would help a lot. Yeah. So um, I also wanted to add that uh, in, in recent calls after selling the XT, uh, new firmware uh, updates have come out from DJI. And just so that we let people know that the normal updates that you typically do with the SD card into the, the um, uh, camera, the X3, the X5, or the XT, we've got to remember that the XT does not accept any of the firmware updates that uh, usually go for the ship. Uh, it can't read those, it doesn't see those. But there so, is so a, basically, to make a firmware update when you get a, a new firmware update, any firmware update, take the X3 camera or the XT X5 and put that on the Inspire, and correct. then you can do an update. That's right. So, yeah, just and then the XT itself does have a dedicated page from DJI that does also have its own firmware updates. So if there's anything that comes up or pops up or changes that, that and I know we're waiting for a major firmware update that's gonna make this radio metric. That's correct, but so, that's not out quite yet. Yeah, and we'll go. We'll probably probably do that a little bit further on down the road and and talk a little bit more about the radio metric on our. Next. Well, I think there's a different video once we get radiometrics yeah. enabled, and TGI has said it's coming. Yes. So once that becomes enabled, I think an industrial inspection yep. video is really in order. That's probably the best. So it, currently, the best thing that we're doing right now is search and rescue application. You don't really need radiometric data for that particular um, job or what we're doing. So currently, that that's what we'll we'll highly demonstrate today. So so what we're going to do now, we did a couple of clips up in the desert. And the first one here, John is just going to talk about the equipment as he unboxes it. Okay. So here's the first clip. Hey, we're here to talk a little bit about the DJI Inspire XT camera. The uh, Again, we're using a thermal XT camera on our Inspire. Um, as we get into uh, the box here, as, as soon as you receive your unit, uh, open the box. It's the same physical size. Our box is the same physical size as the X5 uh, camera box. So uh, it makes it very, uh, very easy to go ahead and transport or move it uh, because you can still use that X5 space if you need to. So it will fit in the original case if you needed to take this and do any specific uh, thermal uh, imaging as well as inspections and whatnot. So inside of the box we have some instructions, uh, very simple on how to attach it, uh, where to get your firmware if needed. And do keep in mind that there is a specialized XT page on DJI's website to pull specific XT firmware updates. Uh, it does not show up on the Inspire page. So inside the box we have an SD card spot. So we get this out of here. We have a nice cover on the front of that so that uh, keeps the, the uh, lens protected. Um, and then typical attachments just like the X3 and the X5. On the side is our SD card right there so we can remove or pull that whenever we need. When we attach it it's just as easy as it is on the X3. So. We already have our Inspire up and running here. We'll go ahead and attach. And it fires up and our application should immediately come up with a um, uh, the uh, XT confirmation, which again, since a lot of people have not got these XTs yet, the DJI app will actually show up with a XT 
uh, version just like the Inspire Pro or the X3 or whatever. So there's a portion in there that specifically is for the XT. So after firing up again on the application, if we can see this, we do have the FLIR XT up here at the top. If we go ahead and click on our camera here, we should see some thermal imaging right at the get-go here. So we do see that, we're ready to go. Map shows up if we need to do that. And we're pretty much ready to fly. So um, there are some initial camera settings that we'll roll through a little bit later that uh, on how to set up the camera, um, whether we're doing isometric uh, stuff and messing around with other things. But today we really wanna focus on doing a, a basic search and rescue type application. So we wanna be able to show that and, and have you guys get an idea on how that's gonna come about. So as far as uh, setting up the camera, it's very, very simple basically out of the box, put it on the ship, make sure that all of your firmware is updated both on the ship as well as in the camera. Um, we did have a couple of comments on people coming in and not being able to get the app to work because their app wasn't updated. So I wanna make sure everything is updated uh, as far as we can go and we'll probably put a quick link in there on on the uh, current up, up uh, firmware numbers that we're at right now to make sure you guys are right where you need to be. So that was basically all the gear John finds in the box or some of the gear which is required. But the next thing you're doing here, I know that one of the things you did was a quick functionality test. Mm -hmm. So running through it is just to make sure that we know where the switches are that change. So we show a little bit of that uh, in this next clip. Um, basically where the dial is, because there's only a couple of things. There's uh, uh, options on the touch screen as well as color palette change, digital, digital zoom things that can be accessed on the digital zoom from the app. Personally, I don't like getting into the app too much. Yeah. Because I feel the app distracts me. Yeah. I get my eyes into the screen rather than be having my eyes out of the cockpit and keeping an eye on the Sure. Board. Yeah. Where things I can do with the switches and like the digital zoom, double tap on the right mm -hmm. stroller. Yep, just one tap, one tap. So one just tap. one tap, you, you know, and at no, least one knowing it's one. For me. Yeah, <laughs> just one tap and you change from zoom one tap and you change to color palette changes. So that's on the right, upper right. But yep. the important thing is they have actually laid out a lot of the functions so you don't have to get in to start tapping on a screen. Mm -hmm. So the next one here, you're gonna be taking it up and go through the basics. Yep. So we're ready to take off here. Um, as we, uh, again, go ahead and, and get ready to go, we wanna make sure all our firmware is updated. We have good GPS connection. Again, we have a nice, uh, cool backdrop in the mountainside here. So it's really, really a nice day today. Um, we're hoping to possibly even catch with this 19 millimeter lens we have on the front of this particular FLIR. We're also running a 640 resolution at 30 hertz on this one. Um, we're hoping to maybe catch some small animals or little rabbits or something like that because they do show up in the shots pretty good so let's go ahead and get up in the air and we'll show you some functions of the actual app as well as the remote on what we're changing in the air let's get in the air Okay, so there's a couple of things here that uh, is pretty important. I mean, we've got our same gimbal function, so we're able to touch, you know, with a single operator and move the gimbal around, so that's very easy. For me, this button right here, I go ahead and function that as the snap to the forward again. Uh, very easy. Same stuff as we're using with the X3. But a question I get a lot is, uh, how do I change my color palettes as well as do digital zoom? We're also capable of doing currently um, live temperature. So there isn't any radiometric, radiometric data yet. It is coming to be able to pull that off of there. But when we have it up in the air, we're able to use this dial that typically changes our exposure rate. Um, that, if we just roll that a little bit, we do. We are able to change our color palettes on the screen. So some of those that we do have, we have black hot, we have white hot, green hot, red hot, rain, which is a fairly new one for uh, FLIR on this camera. Color two, which you can set in a parameter that you want to. Color one, uh, we have iron bow, which is probably the most, uh, has got the most uh, contrast with what most people see in a general sense. 
Globo Sepia Ice Fire. An ice Fire is a really good one for search and rescue. We can kind of get that, uh, if you can see in the screen here, we can we can get the actual um, temperature popping to where red is, is being the hottest thing in the scene. And sometimes you'll get flashes of blue or black that are also the coldest thing in the scene. So even as we move around and look at ourselves, we'll turn this back around. And we should be able to see our camera here. We'll roll down and point at us on the road. And here we are, and we don't show up too much in the contrast there with that particular that particular um, color palette. So if we change that just a little bit, we have that ability to go ahead and get something that uh, gets a little bit more contrast to be able to see items in the shot a little bit better. So probably the best one right there is going to be either black hot or white hot. So I'm going to step away from the camera for just a second and throw my hand up in the air and we'll be able to see a little bit of that in the ice fire, sepia. We can see all kinds of stuff. So even my hand raising here, we can see ourselves in that shot. So works out really well there. And with a little bit more contrast with black hot or white hot, rather than the mix of colors, you tend to, to get that a little bit a little bit better, clearer picture there. So um, that would be again on this this particular dial. Now we depress this dial one time. And now we're in digital zoom. So a digital zoom, we've still got our subjects in the shot, us and the car. We can come in to two times, four times, and to eight times. And as you can see, as we go to like any kind of zoom, the stability in the camera changes a little bit. So we've got it bouncing around a little bit. We've got it, you know, moving just a bit. So Zoom is great if you're up in the air. We're probably we're at an altitude right now of about oh what 40 feet. So not super high, but we'll go take it up a little bit higher. As we go into digital zoom, you'll see that stabilization depending on the subject you want to want to follow. So let's get back out with the digital zoom and again review that one more time. So we depress the button one time, or we depress it again to change from color palette changes to digital zoom changes. If we did want to do any recording, all the functions are the same. Playback off the SD card, all of those functions are the same as we've, as we've known for so long. So we will, again, talk a little bit more about uh, fun functionality in the actual app, but let's do some flying around and see if we can find anything fun. So on this next clip, we go ahead and take a look at the um, actual color palette functions, what it looks like in different ways. My personal favorite is the uh, black hot. So um, that's my own personal favorite. And my eyes seem to be uh, most receptive to that. So we- Well, I think in, in my experience too, of using this system, all the bright colors really doesn't help me a lot identify stuff on the ground. Yep. Different variety of black and white seems to give me more information most oh, sure. of the time. Yeah, and you definitely, like I said, this, 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 the color palettes really do throw in so much color everywhere that it's hard to really focus well, on one looks, section. Looking yeah, it colors. looks all over the place, so. The other thing to notice in the next clip here is, I really look like other objects in the desert out there. It's really hard to define the difference between you and other things because again, some of them are radiating heat. Um, you may not be radiating as much heat um, and it might be very difficult to find you out there. Yeah, I mean, because in the video, you were really looking at me for a while. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I started moving my hands that all of a sudden it became very clear where I was. Exactly, yep. And so, so again, the, the, the application here is we really want to look at those limitations and take some practice and time and do some of that, uh, that stuff in the search and rescue application. Training is very important when you're using thermal. Getting thermo. used to looking at this image. Getting used to the images. Yep. So let's take a look at the video here where John actually finds me before I run out of Mountain Dew and fresh water. That's right. Okay, rolling, here we go. Okay, so once again, we're gonna go ahead and try to find our subject here. Um, we do have some uh, uh, temperature difference, hopefully enough that our subject actually shows out a little bit here. So at the beginning, what we do is um, 
I, we want to be able to have a, a high can, a high contrast in temperature, which again shows a high contrast in color. So hopefully our subject is warm enough out there, early mornings, later evenings, any type of, even when we're doing any kind of uh, um, uh, inspections or anything like that, this is also very important. So uh, looking at thermal as being the, it just pops right out is simply not the case. In some cases we do have, you know, we're going to watch our subject actually move, which is easier to see than somebody that stays still. So let's go ahead and see if we what we can find here. As we roll forward, my particular color palette I seem to like the best would be the black hot. Um, it's, it tends to show just a little bit better in the contrast, for my eyes anyway. When you start to pick some of the color, and as we're moving around, we pick colors that are not quite as contrasted. Let's we'll see if we can find our subject across the hill here. When you choose colors that are a little bit more uh, variations, again, they kind the subjects sometimes tend to be hidden a little bit more. So, well, that kind of looks like a person right there, legs a little bit, standing there quite easily. So let's go up. That's exactly what we have there. So as we stay up still right here, let's go through some of those color palettes and show you exactly what I'm talking about. So he's moving around and it makes it very helpful when we roll through some of these palettes to see when a subject is actually moving. But with somebody that might be doing search and rescue, somebody laid up, laid down, injured, not moving, these particular things can be very difficult to try and see. So even in this color palette here, Color two is what they call it, and color one just does not quite show up unless he starts to move around. So it's a perfect uh, 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 example of not quite everything just pops up with thermal. We want to make sure that we've got the great conditions, we've got great uh, setup, and hopefully, again, we've got enough battery that even if something kind of gives enough anomaly, we can see it out there. So let's go ahead and digital zoom on him just a little bit. So we're digital zoom there. That is eight times. Here we're at four times. And then two times. That color change, there's a nuke right there. That's what we call that. So the nuke happened. It was a, a recalibration of the pixels when going into that much. So there's another nuke right there. So we can even see, like I said, flying rapidly or fast through an area, you can have a nuke happen and also lose your subject or go ahead and clear a search area that that is like okayed by a nuke that may have missed a subject that you were able to not be able to show that. So very important that we uh, understand that. So let's follow our subject all the way in and just relatively watch him move along and run through some of those shrubs and bushes. I'm gonna go back to black hot there we are and he's he's rolling through some pretty heavy sagebrush out there and you can see the disappearance sometimes of even his legs so if somebody was out there laying in that sagebrush very difficult to see them so follow him all the way in but that's kind of what we're looking for. We want to make sure that, again, we have some great color contrast, some t contrast in, in temperatures. Uh, it shows people up much easier. So in your search and rescue applications, it's really important that we uh, get a little bit of that understanding. So, And again, I think I just like to watch Bo run up and down the hill. So there you have it guys, you have seen a little bit more about what the XT camera system can do. Uh, we're going to be back with some more videos and hopefully bring back John McBride again from Rocky Mountains Unmanned Systems. And if you've got questions about the XT systems or thermal imaging for search and rescue, go ahead and give John a call. We're gonna put the phone number right over here mm -hmm. because he is one of the leading resellers of thermal systems in the US. Just having sold a number of these systems also give John a bunch of insight into how these systems would fit into your application and what kind of parts you need and what you, parts you don't need. Oh, exactly. Because we looked at this before, you don't always need radiometric systems. Mm -hmm. 
but you do need a reliable aerial system, and John is the expert on that. That's right. So subscribe, stay tuned, and we'll be back with more videos here in the FPV Guy. Better drink your water before you like, you know, it was a hot day today. I know, I, I walked 10 meters. <laughs>